Oh, hell. Keegan rolled over and came to his knees just as the weasel brought his right boot up, sending Keegan rolling toward the nearest table. I'll teach you to lie for Queen Victoria and servants of Her Majesty. Keegan came up with one of the chairs from the nearest poker table. The chair became little more than kindling after he slammed it into the charging puny devil. Keegan? Out of the corner of his eye, Keegan saw the bartender lifting a bung starter and removing his apron. He had just enough time to pick up the bleeding fellow and throw him through the window. As the glass rained across the boardwalk and the now quiet weasel, Keegan turned to meet the morning shift barkeep and saw something else. The railroad worker was helping himself to some of Keegan's winnings. You damn sneak thief. Keegan grabbed a broken chair leg from the floor. Damn! The railroad worker lifted the weasel's chair over his head and charged. As the man swung that chair back toward Keegan, the old army sergeant jammed the blunt end of the broken chair leg into the man's solid gut. But the chair already had momentum. The next thing Keegan knew, he was lying on the floor again, bleeding from his scalp and nose, and his shoulders and back hurt like blazes. He came up quickly, saw the railroad man shaking his head to regain his faculties, saw the barkeep slipping on a pair of brass knuckle dusters, and saw the house dealer still at the table, rolling a cigarette and counting his chips. Keegan lowered his shoulder as he charged, catching the railroad man on the side, just above the hip, and drove him all the way to the wall. If you don't stop right this minute, I'll kill both of you. The railroad man's head faced the wall. He had lost his railroad cap, but he had a fine head of red hair. Hell, maybe he was Irish too. Keegan latched onto the hair, jerked it hard, and then slammed the man's forehead against the wall of pine planks. Keegan pulled back the man's head and let it feel pine again. He pulled the head back and was going to see if he could punch a hole in the wall and give the real Lobo Saloon a new door, but the railroad worker's eyes had rolled back into his head, so Keegan let the man drop to the floor. Besides, the bartender was bringing back his arm to lay Keegan out with those hard brass knuckles. Keegan ducked and felt the man's right sail over his head and slam into the wall. He figured those broken fingers must hurt like hell. He grabbed the man's shoulder, spun him around, slammed a right into the stomach, grabbed his shoulders with both hands, and hurtled him across the room. He caught the closest table, slid over it, knocked down and busted a chair, and lay spread-eagled on the floor. Keegan went back to the railroad man and pulled out most of the money the thief had tried to steal. He then went back to the poker table where the dealer raised his coffee cup and smiled. Nice fight, Keegan. <laughs> Keegan knocked him out of his chair. Well, what the hell was that for? For not stopping him from lifting my winnings. <laughs>